Do you want to change how Elias 9 looks? Maybe you want to add a couple different colors here and there, or you want to change a logo or an icon that you otherwise cannot change through the interface, then this is the demonstration for you on how to do that in Elias 9. This is a presentation that I held live in the official Elias Discord server. Keep in mind that this is only a snapshot. There is a lot of active, heavy development going on. So in the future, things might work a little bit different. This is Elias when you're just using the default system style called Delos. Our product, it's called Kate. Kate is an extended Elias we made specifically fit to the corporate clients. In Kate, Elias looks very, very different. We have this very minimal white skin that we're using a lot. We have uh, the possibility to add some color if needed. All this is possible with the custom styles in Elias. In many parts of the interface and the code, these skins are called system styles. I always call them skins or themes because that's what they often called in other systems. But just so you know, I'm using the term interchangeably here. By changing the look of Elias, you can make your Elias instant fit more to your brand. And of course, you can also use established UX patterns from other parts of your institutions. For example, if your users are used to look for certain icons for certain things or are used to certain color schemes for important messages and stuff like that. It allows you to put these design patterns that your people already know into Elias. And I think that's a very great way to make Elias truly your own. My name is Ferdinand Englander. Uh, I'm a front-end developer at CAT Concepts and Training. We run Elias instances that we call Kate, modified and specialized for businesses. We have clients that are insurances, car manufacturers, mid-sized to large organizations. Our system Kate has a base skin and this base skin we always adapt and tweak to fit specifically to the needs of our client. In Elias 9, there were some big changes to the way of how the style code works. At the end of 2019, there was a proposal to restructure the code without going into many details. The old code of Delos was pretty much one long file. A little bit of code would be up there and then you scroll further and somebody would have put some code there. The structure could be improved. And in that time, we also considered uh, switching the preprocessor. In case you don't know, we don't immediately write CSS code, which is the style code that changes how HTML looks. But we use the power of another language before that that allows a couple more things that CSS doesn't allow with regards to setting color variables and other variables, nesting and functions that you can't do like that in CSS. 2023, we came up with coding guidelines with the help of the CSS squad and the University of Bern. Then in July 2023, we finally had the big restructuring. I had the honor to work on a lot of that. And we touched every line of Delos code, sorted it into a new structure. We're going to see the structure in a second. There was this library that we were using called Bootstrap. Bootstrap is a design library that has many basic functions like how buttons look, how forms look, how certain layout functions work, like the grid system when you place content next to each other. We were only using 30% of Bootstrap and a lot of code that was loaded and installed with Elias was never used. We couldn't update Bootstrap because we relied on the old preprocessor less and the new preprocessor ZAS uh, is what is used for the new versions of Bootstrap. So one big part of that project was to ingest the code of Bootstrap that we need and kick out a lot of unused code. So through this, Delos is now a lot more structured and a lot tidier and we got rid of a lot of dead weight. I wasn't alone in this. I also had a lot of help from my coworkers at CUT and support from the University of Bern, which was really great. 
I'm going to show you needed and recommended tools that I would suggest everyone to take a look at or to think about because it makes the working process a lot easier. We will have a look at a more simple strategy. If you don't want to make big changes to the skin, if you don't want to change how, how Elias looks completely, this is probably the method that you should consider. There's a more advanced technique where you take the code of Delos, you fork it from the original code and you build your style on top of this by modifying Delos. This should probably be approached how you would usually approach software development, uh, but it allows you to do really, really big changes to how Elias looks. One big recommendation that I have is to set up a development environment on your local machine so that you don't have to upload files. You have Elias running right there on your computer. And if you make changes to the skin, it immediately changes. And one of the tools that you can use was developed by us and is open source. You can just search for Doyle on GitHub and you will find it. You should have a Linux machine, to be fair. We've only really tested and developed this for Linux. This allows you with just a couple of clicks to have Elias instances running on your local machine. Then you need the ZAS preprocessor that will turn the SCSS files into CSS files that are then used by the browser to show your styling. Specifically, you, we are using the SCSS syntax from ZAS. There's also an alternative ZAS syntax, but we're using SCSS in Elias. Dart ZAS is the most up-to-date ZAS variant. There are a couple ports to other programming languages that sometimes are a little bit behind. One thing with regards to the browser development tools is if you hit F12 to open the dev tool under network, you can disable caching. So if you have this checked, whenever you reload the page, it will load everything again. Even if it was cached, even if it was saved somewhere in between, it will not use that. It will download everything anew. And that's really important for the style code because if you don't have this checked, you run into situations where you change something on the style code and you don't immediately see the changes because something got cached and wasn't refreshed. And you can uh, prevent this by clicking this little check mark. And then, of course, development tools, as you will see later, are very helpful for the actual work on the skin. We're starting right now with the more simple method. We're going to make our skin just by changing a couple colors here and there. I'm going to walk you through it, how to do that. I am here in release nine. I just downloaded the current state. The files where the skin usually is located is in templates default. You see how everything has been separated in different layers. And the most interesting layer for this method is the settings layer because the settings layer has things like how do buttons look? How do the fonts look, the typography? It has the color palette, all the main colors. So in this first method that I'm going to show you, you have the possibility to change every variable that is on this first settings layer. First, what you have to do is you have to go into the elias.ini.php in the root of your Elias installation. Elias already needs to be installed, I think, for this file to exist. I guess I just added to the setup part of that ini. There we go. This activates a couple of functions and the overriding that will allow us to build skins. If you plan to commit your changes to GitHub, you need to change something in the git ignore file. The git ignore file it has a list of files that are usually not saved in Git. And the skin folder is included here just so that during development, developers don't accidentally commit their skins when they're working on something for general Elias. So if you want to commit your skin files to Git, you need to go into the Git ignore, which is here, 
one of the folders listed is customizing global, which is where the skins will be located. So we need to get rid of that before we do anything else. This paves our way for our skin files to also be version controlled. We need to create a folder for our skin. And the first part of this, this is, this is mandatory. This is where Elias looks for skins. It's in customizing global skin. And then you can give your skin a name. And now in customizing global skin, we have a folder for our skin. In the skin folder, we need to create a template XML. The template XML is something like, a, like an ID card for our skin. It has information about the skin. Most importantly, the name. This is the name that is going to be shown in the interface. You have a skin and the skin can have multiple styles. So what we are technically talking about is how to build such a style. Uh, one skin can have multiple styles. So you not only need to come up with a name for your skin, but also a name for your style. And the ID, this is the name of the files that we are looking for. Let's create that file. Oh, my computer is a bit slow while recording. Late XML. Of course, we want to add it to Git. We want it to be tracked like everything else. There we go. We created a folder and the template XML for the skin. Now we need to create a folder for the style and the folder needs to be called the ID of the style. So I go into here, create new directory, my style. And this is where all of our work will now happen from. Now on mystyle.scss will be our entry point for this skin creation. Now what we're doing for this simple approach is we import Delos. We import everything that was already made for the Delos skin just by using at use and then giving the address of where the delos.scss is located. So we go out of a bunch of folder, out of customizing global skin, blah, 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 and then in templates default and fetch everything from delos. But of course, we don't just want to take delos how it is, we want to change it. So what we can do is we can import Delos and then using the with commands with the brackets here, we can change variables that are exposed to the entry point. And every variable in the settings layer, so if we go back into templates, default settings, and for example, we go into the color palette, you can see that all these values like the Elias main color, they have a flag set, this uh, exclamation mark default. And that means that this variable is exposed to the entry point and can be overwritten at the entry point. So everything in the settings layer that has exclamation mark default, which should be every variable in the settings layer, can be changed in that entry point. So let's just copy this real quick and change the main color, which already, and that's the great thing about this variable, changes a bunch of colors in many, many places. So if we go back to here, I can change that and save it. So far, we haven't created anything that the browser can actually read. We have only created our SCSS file and uh, the browser needs CSS to display the skin. So next, we need to compile the SCSS file to become CSS, and we're using Dart SAS to do that. First, uh, I'm going to navigate into that location in my terminal, and now I'm gonna tell Dart SAS to find my style .scss and turn it into my style .css. 
Let's see. At the moment, we get a, a bunch of deprecation warnings. If you just get the deprecation warnings for the order of rules, this is something we are aware of and we need to, to change soon. But other than this, everything seems to have worked. So now what we can do is we can log into our local Elias installation and in the administration area, we can find lay layout and navigation, layout and styles. And we will see that there is a style with the name my style. It's in the skin, my skin. And we can make this the default and we can also change people who are assigned to Delos which at the moment is everyone in the system, we can change them to use the My Skin, My Style look. And as you can already see, the red that we set as the default color is trickling into the skin. I have to set the um, default again. So the cool thing about the main color is it's not only used exactly how it is. You can see that there are a bunch of colors that are derived from the main color. For example, that the button gets darker is a color that got calculated from the main color. Or this hover color here is also derived from the main color made brighter. This will be our goal more and more that to make simple skins and to change the look of your system very quickly, I think it would be very good if we have more connections like this, that if you just change a couple of variables, this will trickle down in a lot of areas already. But we also always want to give you the chance to, if you don't agree with this hover color, you can also still change that, especially in the advanced styling method that I will show after this. So let's play around with it a little bit more. Before we do more fun stuff, if we look into the console, wherever that is right now, here, you can see that some paths were just not found. It's looking for fonts in customizing global skin, my skin, my style, fonts, icon fonts, and the icon font isn't there. And this is true for a bunch of other things. So to change that, we need to also change the paths that the skin is using. There's a variable called web font path. Usually it has a relative path from the templates default folder and the same for background image and icon font path. And we need to correct this by telling it to go out of the customizing global skin folder back into templates defaults and find the fonts and images and icon fonts there if we want to use them you know you have the freedom to use your own fonts and your own icon fonts and then it might make sense to not use the paths like this but in this case i want to just steal from delos and let's put that in real quick you can tell scss to watch your files so if you add dash dash watch it should always recompile whenever there's a change detected. And it also works fairly well if you make changes on subfolders and subfiles, it should always try to recompile that. And now this terminal is busy with always recompiling the skin whenever it detects a change. So let's open up a new terminal. If you reload this page, we can see that a lot of red disappeared because it found the fonts and the icons once again. Let's look around in the settings layer for a couple more variables that we could change. One of the big changes, not so recently, but compared to all the Elias versions is that the standard page background is white. What can you do if you don't want it to be white? Well, we could look into the settings layer. Let's look at the color palette. That sounds like it will make sense to be here. And here we find main background, okay, and page background. So, you know, you can do a little bit of trial and error and you could pick one of these variables, see what it does. But I can tell you right now, page background is the one that we are looking for. Main background is pretty much everything that is white. You don't want to flip that because there are a couple of things that you still want to be pure white. But yeah, ill page background. Let's take that and paste it here. And let's make a light gray 
Well, it might be too. Well, well, we can see how it is. I would recommend to always immediately put the comma at the end of it. It makes it easy that if you just want to add something real quick, you can just write it. And uh, if you forget this comma, then SAS will complain. This should have compiled right now. Wonderful. And we can see how this changed our background color. A bit extreme. <laughs> but yeah, this is just a demonstration of things that you can do. The header color would be nice to do something with that. So once again, we go back into the color palette, but we won't find the header color here. This is because the header has its own settings file. Oh, never mind. I stand corrected. You no, oh no, you do. You do have the color here. I didn't see any color values, that's why I was surprised. But so this is interesting. It's the standard page header background color, and it uses the ill main big A color. So the color palette from the settings layer is being imported in this file. It has this namespace prefix, and then we use the white of the main background as the color by default. We can also overwrite this by taking this variable and back in our MyStyle file, put in a nice background color. I don't know, let's choose like, let's choose a yellow or something. The cool thing with some IDEs, you get a little color picker here and you can choose your color. It compiled again, and now we have a yellow header. Yeah, I think you can already see how powerful this is. Just by changing a couple variables, we can make things look different. Next, let's take the main bar color. The main bar color is usually this dark gray. We find this in the main bar file, maybe? Main bar button color. This is the one that we might want. Copy this. I just typed something for the color picker to appear. And then I'm going to change this a nice dark red. And I think I probably want the color a bit brighter here. Save it. It gets recompiled. Oh, it didn't work. I changed the text color. You can see that. The text color now has this dark red. So the variable is probably called something different. Button BG color. Let's double check. Yeah, button big color. See, I, I copied the wrong variable name. This is the name, this is the color of the text, this is the color of the background. And then of course you can also change the other states, like the highlight and what is selected. This is what we ended up with. That's not everything that you can do with this simple setup. You can also change the logo and you can change icons. The way how this works is there is an overriding mechanism in the customizing skin folder. And this overriding mechanism allows you to overwrite other files than CSS files, for example, images or fonts or HTML templates. So if we are in templates default, you can see that we have an images folder here and the images folder is full of all kinds of icons. And there's a logo folder which has all kinds of logo variations. And we can tell Elias, instead of using this logo that is in template default images logo header icon, we can put that same structure into the skin folder, into the style folder to be specific. And then Elias will use those instead. So it will be in my skin, my style. And now we need to recreate that structure, images, logo. Let's take an icon from font awesome. So if we go to font awesome, gonna have a look for a quick icon that we can use. We're gonna take a light bulb. Why not the classic one? You can download the SVG file and we're going to use that one. Copy it. Let's just double check the name. So the name is header icon in camel case. Okay, so let's do that. And then there's also header icon responsive that we should probably also overwrite. So let's paste it, name it like the file that Elias is expecting, header icon.svg. 
as we can see, the Elias icon disappeared, but no new icon appeared. How can this be? Well, the big problem with SVGs is that they can be exported in two ways. SVG is a vector format, so there are no actual pixels. They're just paths, and there's a mathematical description of the icon. They can be saved responsive. Then they do not have their own width. They just take 100% of whatever space is available to them. And then there's the way to save the file with uh, pixel dimensions to say how large the icon actually is. And in this case, the Ilias logo originally was saved with pixel dimensions, and the light bulb isn't. The light bulb doesn't have set pixel dimensions in the file. So when you're working with SVG files and you're a bit stumped on why you can't see the files, this is usually the reason why. It's because they are there, but they're super tiny. So let's use the picker and try to locate our logo. And then we can see that in hidden XS, this is where our image should be. You can see my skin, my style, images, logo header. Ah, and if I hover over it, you can also see that the light bulb is there. So you have two options now. You can either save your logo as an SVG that actually has size information in there, this is probably what you should do. So, you know, you can be sure that this is being shown in the right resolution. But since we're already working on the style code and we have a place to put style code, I could also go in here and say, okay, if I have this ill logo class, which is this one, and there's an image in there, I can give this a width. So if we say ill logo, and images, we can give this uh, with, let's try 50 pixel, that is too much. There we go, isn't this pretty? If you add anything in the Chrome or Firefox inspector using this plus symbol, it's being added to the inspector style sheet, which is very cool because you can just go in and copy this. And if we drop this into our file at the end of this, we also have a little bit of a CSS tweak here. So you can smuggle more CSS code into your skin you're basically taping it after all of the other style code. So all the other style code that builds Delos is still there and being used, and you just put something at the very end of it. And this way you can, can overwrite certain things, but you need to keep in mind, this will only extend Delos. So the complete Delos is being loaded, and then your additions are loaded. So this is not suitable for large amounts of additions. If you say like, I want to change the skin completely, it would not be very wise to just put this here because all of the other code is still being loaded and that makes your app slower and your users more frustrated. Let's save this real quick. And then we can see that if I refresh the browser, the change should persist the light bulb is being shown there. You can do similar things with the icons of the main bar here. I think there's also a place to change the main bar icons by uploading an icon. But if you want to change the really like default icons, if we inspect this, we can see that it is in templates default images standard and then icon dshs.svg. If we rebuild this in our skin folder, you know, global skins, my skin, my style, images standard, I can dshs.svg, it will take that instead, that icon. Yeah, and this is pretty much everything for this approach. So I would recommend this version only if you just have a couple of colors that you want to change and you know maybe some fonts and a couple other things here and there but nothing major that makes your Elias look completely different that is what you're using the other method for so let's have a look at how to create advanced skins, advanced system styles. There's something that is relatively new. It's a GitHub repository just for the style code. It's in the official Elias eLearning organization, 
there is a repository called Delos. And all that this is, is a copy of the files that are currently in templates default plus the HTML templates. So there's a script that collects all the HTML uh, templates from the different locations, for example, from the modules and services. And if we go into this real quick, you can see that they're all the folders with the different HTML templates. And the reason why they're in here is because you can use these HTML templates to override the HTML templates that would otherwise be used by the core. You don't have to have them there. You can just delete them again. If you delete them, it will just use the normal HTML templates from the core. But if you plan to change HTML templates, you might want to have uh, a couple of those in your skin. Yeah, and other than that, it's pretty much an exact copy of the templates default folder with the settings layer and all the stuff that we saw before. So specifically, we want to be in release nine, not inside trunk. Let's just reset this beautiful thing that we created here to origin release nine. So we got release nine, how it comes when you download it from GitHub. Let's also delete the files. They're no longer managed by GitHub, which is why they are still here because they are on the Git ignore. So we have to delete our previous experiment here. So the location is still the same. You still want your files for this custom complex skin. You still want them to be there. The cool thing about this repository, it's automatically updated whenever the actual Elias repo changes. Whenever there's a style change, it will also change in this repository. This makes it easy to pull and diff changes from the unmodified Delos. So let's say you have built your awesome skin and you have done some changes in it and you, you see that the core also changed something. You might want to pull some of the changes from the core back into your skin. Then you can easily do that by comparing the changes that you made with the changes that are coming in from the core. It allows you to pick and choose. It allows you to have some parts of your skin that are always in sync with the core, and you can have some parts of your skin that you might heavily change. And there are a couple of ways of how you could do this. You could just do some good old copy and paste, just copy your skin into customizing global skin whenever you want them to be seen. You can git clone this repository into customizing global skin, which I don't think is officially recommended to clone a Git repository into a Git repository. For these sorts of things, GitHub has functions called Git subtree, and there's also Git submodule. Git submodule is a little bit more like a package that you want to download and not change. And Git subtree, like I think you can also commit code to a submodule, but Git subtree, as far as I know, I'm no expert on this, is the one where it's easier to commit some code to. So if you're working on both code for your Elias instance and code for your skin, this is a way to, to do this. So for this demonstration, Let's use git subtree. I have to say we're also fairly at the beginning from using this workflow, but so far it seems to be pretty promising. And yeah, as I said, you can use pretty much any workflow that you want as long as the skin files somehow end up in customizing global skin. With this command, we're going to add a new subtree. This prefix is very important. It is the location where your second repository starts. And in this case, it starts in customizing global skin, my skin, my style. Then you want to connect to that GitHub repository and you want a specific branch, you want release nine. And then you can also, you can also choose if you want the complete commit history, like every change that was made, or if you want to have it summarized into just one commit. You know what, let's let's l l have a look at our fork. So usually, of course, what you would do is you would go to GitHub, Elias, e-learning, 
and then not Elias, but Delos. And you would fork this. I already have a fork made. Let's take release nine and make a new branch out of it. Say Discord skin demo from release nine. So we have a new branch set up that is the same as release nine. Let's just change the branch name, Discord skin demo. And as we can see, this worked. There are now files in customizing global skin. And it is what we saw in the repository, basically a copy of Delos. This doesn't work right now because it's missing the template XML and it's missing the, the, the files are still named delos.scss. So we still need to change that. Oh, and one thing also very important, we need to go into the git ignore again because we started fresh, you know, I, I reset everything. We need to cross out cus customizing global fr from the git ignore. Actually, I'm not sure if we have to because it is in the folder that is managed by subtree. So we might not have to do that. I, I I don't do it. Let's see how that goes. Because if we would cross this out, we would commit the skin also to our main repository, but we might want the skin only to be committed to the subtree repository, right? So we need to drag the template XML that is in here into the skin folder, into my skin. And let's change the name here. We change the name to my skin and we have my style and my style. There we go. Saving this. Now let's go into the my style folder and change the name of Delos SCSS to mystyle.scss. Change the CSS file as well. There we go. Let's navigate into that folder. Customizing global skin, my skin, my style. Dot sus. Turn my style dot scss into my style. CSS and watch the files. Okay, that should have worked. Let's see what happens in our development environment. Yeah, everything went back to looking like Delos because right now we only have a copy of Delos. So what are some things that we can now do with this copy of Delos. There are a couple of approaches, a couple of possibilities that are now uh, possible. Oh yeah, and, and one thing, I don't think we will get to actually committing something today, but if you commit your changes to GitHub, you shouldn't mix subtree files and core files in the same commit. It, it should also not be possible. I think you will get a warning if you, if you try to do that. But yeah, things can go wrong if you do that. So don't do that. You can push changes back to the subtree. If you have a commit that only has subtree files in it, you can push this with git subtree push. You still need to give the entire prefix because you know there could be more than one subtree in your repository. So let's change the fonts. And there are two files that we will have to look for to get this change done. Settings typography and normalized typography. And then of course the, the font folder itself. Let's say we download a font from Google Fonts, especially for trying something really quick. Google Fonts is excellent. Let's take something modern like Montserrat. And we want to download everything. How did that work again? Oh yeah, you have to put them in a in a shopping cart and then you can download it. Got my font extract here and then we can copy that folder over to 
customizing global skin, my skin, my style, and there's a fonts folder. Eventually we might want to kick out these other fonts that we don't use, but for now, let's just place our fonts nicely alongside it. And there we have the Montserrat folder now with the different variations. And you can see that there's also Open Sans with all the, this is the font that is currently being used with all the variations here. Okay, now to the two places that we listed before, there's settings typography. And settings typography is interesting because it has the name of the font that it is supposed to use. So in normalizing, normalizing typography, and this is now not on the settings layer, you might want to argue that maybe this could also be on the set settings layer. This is another thing, by the way, if you style your skin and you realize like, hey, this is far too deep, this should be something that we should change, be able to change with the more simple method that we saw earlier, we can always open up the debate to move some color variables or some specific variables further up into the settings layer. That's always a, a discussion that we can have, for example, at the CSS squad in Discord, or in general, you can make a PR. And yeah, we want to change these. We want to go to fonts. And they're all TTF. Okay, so let's just change this one. So we want monster app static. And then we have monster app regular. I'm pretty sure you can also get these other formats out of Google Fonts. You don't have to use the TTF fonts if you don't want to. And let's change the bolt one to, oh, this needs a semicolon, of course. And then we're going to change the this one as well to bolt. One thing you need to pay attention uh, to is that you are in the right structure because everything here, all the file names are exactly the same as in templates default. It can sometimes happen that you edit the wrong file and that would be a shame because then you need to restore some files, copy some stuff over and not that that hasn't happened to me many times before. Oh, we also need to change the name here so it will be recognized by the other setting that we set. Okay, and now we should see another font. Oh, we don't. Why is that? I mean, one typo can, can ruin this. The problem was that in the CSS statements, I wrote the file names of the fonts with a dash and the file names on the hard drive do not have a dash before regular or bold. If I would correct the name, then the fonts would load correctly. Now I figured I wanted to show you how to change something that is definitely not supported by the first method to change. Change how all panels look in our skin. So the good thing about the modern code in Elias that we're, is that we're using the UI components more and more. And there are UI components for the panels, for example, which is these kinds of boxes here. And the great thing is that if you change a UI component, it changes everywhere where that UI component is used. At the moment, we have the unfortunate position that there are also legacy UI components that are not being reached by the modern code. So those parts will still be unchanged. But here in the dashboard, the panel that is being used is the UI component panel. Let's say we have a very minimalistic brand that we want to show and we don't want to have these boxes. We don't want to box in content. We just want to work with moving things close together and having some space between sections. We don't want to have a box around it with some padding. So let's look into how we could do that. 
And for this, we can now navigate down in the ITCSS structure. And there's one layer called components, which is where the UI framework, UI components lie. For example, we have the UI framework here. And in the UI framework, we have the component panel. And here we have the code for the panel.scss. If you want something drastically different, you could delete the entire code and write your own panel from scratch. Let's look at the border first. If we want a borderless panel, we should get rid of the border first. Let's see how we can do that. So there are a couple of border variables somewhere else. So my IDE can bring me to this place. Um, and we see that this is in the settings layer. So this is, wouldn't be something that we could reach through the other method. And let's get rid of that. Let's say panel border none. No panel border for you. Then we also need no radius. And panel footer padding, we might want to have zero as well. There is no other oh, footer big E. Let's get rid of that. Inner border, not sure we need that either. Let's get rid of all of that and save it. And let's see what that has done. Ah, nice. All the borders disappeared. Now, next, let's get rid of the padding and at this background color. There's for the header, there's a background color that we want to get rid of. And that is probably in the panel file here. Panel heading, background color, panel heading. So let's set this to transparent or delete the line. That would also be possible. So delete it. Let's see if Git actually registers my changes. Yes, it does. It registers the customizing global skin uh, changes because it is in the subtree. So, and if we would now diff this with the core day loss, then we would see that this line has been deleted and we, we could bring it back. So we got rid of the border. Now we want to get rid of the padding everywhere. Let's just have a look at what kind of paddings we have in this file. Panel body shouldn't have a padding. Panel footer we already set to zero, so we don't need to overwrite that. Let's get rid of all of these. We might then have to bring some paddings back in because we don't want to get rid of all vertical padding. For now, let's take things out and then we can later bring them back in. Okay, this is interesting. This, these minus paddings are usually from the, if we have a column layout with content next to each other, the margin is very often used to counteract the padding so that the padding is only used between two columns and not at the side. I think we actually might run into that. Okay but this should already bring us a lot closer. No, we still have this padding left over. The other cool tool in the development tools is that if you create your SCSS with the standard settings, you not only get the CSS file, one thing you also get is the CSS map. So we can see under my style SCSS, there's also a mystyle.css.map generated. And the cool thing about this file is I can see where things are in the SCSS file. So although the browser actually uses the CSS file, it can give us information about where things are in the SCSS file. So if I have a look at the padding here of the ill header, I can see that there's still some padding coming in and I can see where it's coming from. I can see that it is from your eye component panel line 22. And then I can go to line 22 in that file and delete it. So line 22, indeed, indeed. Was that the one that I said we already had changed? Hmm. 
Sure. Now we realize that some things might be too close together. You know, we do want to have some padding at the bottom here. And this is basically how I would work on a skin. I would try some things, see how far I get just by modifying things. And if you can, just overriding things up to zero or to your new value, those are very easy to diff because you see that if you compare this to the core, you changed a color here. You changed a, a number to zero. So for diffing, this works really well if you just have a couple pinpointed changes that you want to have, then this strategy can work out really, really well. You will have to check your changes if they cannot be consolidated, if they cannot be brought together. One thing that is a little less destructive is to work with files alongside the core files. So let's say we want to change the toolbar. If we go to the repository, since we have a skin where we want to be very, like we don't want to have boxes and stuff like this, we want to change this toolbar here. We don't want this toolbar. I'm not sure if you can see that. I hope this comes uh, out in the screen share. You can see that there is uh, a little gray bar behind, behind the toolbar. Let's say we don't want to have this. So first of all, we should locate which file is responsible for this toolbar. And if you look at it with the inspector, we can see, okay, there's the element bar. The element bar is a general layouting tool. We can see that with the prefix here of the class, which is an L stands for layout. So this is something that happens on the layout layer of the ITSS structure. And here is a C, which means that this is a component, the component toolbar. And the component toolbar is in legacy services UI component. Uh, so this is a legacy UI component. And we could let this file just be. We could just keep it there and put our changes on top of it. Double check if we're still in global, yeah, customizing global skin and not in templates default. Let's go into legacy services and find the toolbar. Was it in services? No, it was in UI component services. There we go. So this is the code responsible for the toolbar. And I'm like, oh, this is so much code. This is some kind of a bootstrap leftover. I'm not sure if I will break something. So what I can do is just create my own file and you're kind of free in where you want this to be. My current preference is to just put it right next to that file that you are adding to. So let's create a new file. We call it my skin legacy toolbar .scss. Just a quick addition from future me, you should always add an underscore to files that are meant to be imported by another file, because that will make sure that this file is never compiled on its own, only when it's used by another file. And then a common mistake that can happen is that you create a new file, you wrote your style code, you compile your skin, and then you realize, hey, nothing changed. This style code is nowhere to be found in the CSS. And that is most likely because you forgot to use it in another file. You have to import it into another file. Otherwise, it will not end up in your CSS file. So to make sure that this is also loaded, we need to have a look at the index of this layer or of this folder. And in our case, the index is all the way up here in components. There's an index.scss and the index.scss is loading all the SCSS files. And one of them is legacy services, UI component, component toolbar. And we are going to add our file next to it, component toolbar. And I have the autocomplete helping me here. In SCSS files, you don't need to write the .css. You can just write the name of the file. That is sufficient. 
Okay, and now this file is also being loaded and we can put our changes there. And this has the advantage that if you pull in a new state of the Delos repository, you know that all files that you added that have the name my skin or whatever we chose, you know that these are from you. What are the actual changes that we want to do? We want to change the padding to zero. See toolbar padding to zero would help if you write it correctly. And background color transparent. This is pretty much everything that we did. We could have done this with the other method. We could have injected this into the other file. One thing you might also need to be conscious about is load order. So we are overriding something here. So it's probably a wise decision to have this file be loaded after the file that we want to overwrite. And sometimes you can solve this by being more specific if you just write body that like this is this is a very odd example you might not want to do it like this like because we have two things here making the address we will always overwrite something that only addresses c toolbar but yeah just as an example if you're more specific with your addressing here it will always overwrite what might be before that and if we reload this it hopefully persists as you can see. Basically with this, you can override files, you can make files completely empty and start them from scratch. You can just have little overrides in the same file. Another approach might be to make very light changes in the index file. So if you just have a couple uh, colors that you might wanna change, you can change the components to have entry point variables and then you could go in the index layer and change those variables. I don't think there is an example yet, but some, maybe the drill down. So what the drill down has, this is also not perfect, but you can see that the drill down starts with a bunch of variables that are important for it and then later used. And usually this is some sort of a handing off point between the global variables and the local variables. So in the drill down, we have a spacing that we use. And this spacing is set to use the global padding large vertical. And the cool thing is now that you can go in here at the top of your drill down file without changing anything lower down. You can just change a bunch of variables and they will already change how the component looks. So I'm a big fan of this. I, I'll probably do this in all of my components from now on that we have like this hand off point. And what, another thing we could think about uh, to even bring that into the core is to expose them to the upper layer. So by setting the header height, by, by flagging this with default, I can now go into the index file, find the drill down. I think they have their own index file. If I'm not mistaken. There is a menu index file in case there are more menu UI components. So this is something that you have in the main controls. There's the main control file and the main con control file imports the meta bar, the main bar, the footer. Oh, this is using import. That is not good. That should not be import. This should be use. Always use add use and not add import. So yeah, uh, sometimes if a file is not in the index, it's probably collected first, all slate files together, all menu files together in this menu file. And the cool thing, what we can do here is if we use add use, we can say, like we did in the, in the other example, with and then change the drill down height, whatever it was called. Drill down header height, there we go. Change it to, I don't know, 90 pixel. Maybe my skin is a little bit bigger. And then this is something you can do. <laughs> Not a semicolon, in with, it's just a list. You just need to put a comma there and it went through. Yeah, so. Those are a couple of ways of how to deal with a more complex skin. 
If you want to know more about our version of Elias named Kate, you might want to check out these videos. They are in German about how the study program in Kate works. It actually shares a lot of the features with the study program in Elias. So even if you're just using Elias, you might find some interesting information in there. Thank you so very much for watching. If you have any questions, come by on our Discord server. Good luck creating your own custom skins. Hope to see you around. Bye bye.